okay sorry about that slow start people let's uh, try this again welcome to uh, Tato live show I'm uh, here to answer any questions you might have or anything you'd like to talk about and I'm also here to talk about some of the articles that have come across my desk in the last day and some of the interesting things that is that are happening in the virtual world and in online teaching so I'm here to answer any questions there is uh, in this broadcast you'll notice on the left hand side there are um, a social stream and also a chat um, I would like to use a social stream I tried the chat I don't think it's as user friendly as the uh, social stream so um, feel free to that when you're here that you introduce yourself let me know who's on so that I can ask you guys questions and you can ask me questions and we can make this a little bit more interactive rather than me just talking um, if there's any delays or any mistakes that um, we've noticed in the past there has been a few delays um, as far as the way this feeds through and that's pretty normal I think uh, it's just the way it's set up so I'm going to start by talking about some of the articles that have come across my desk um, here's the list of them that we're going to talk about today then the neatest thing is that there was probably two or three or four that came across to talk about textbooks and the future of textbooks in education. Uh, one of them, I love the title of this one, We Don't Need No Stinking Textbooks. Uh, I'll st speak to that one. Uh, there's also one that's called uh, Beyond the Textbook. There is one, the, uh, the Internet is the Best Textbook. And so those are the three that I will con that I'll talk about when it comes to textbooks and my feelings about textbooks. And then there's also one that's called there's an article that's called Building Good Search Skills: What Student Students Need to Know. And I think most of us will agree that it's very important that uh, students know how to search the internet and do well searching the internet in order for them to be successful. Um, then there's also an article that talks about the ten best essential resources for teachers. Um, lists for some reason in articles lists always get passed around the the social networks uh, so Twitter you'll find a lot of uh, the 10 best or the 10 best iPad apps or the 10 best reasons why textbooks aren't good in a classroom or they are the most important things and so on so you'll find all of those out here so here's this next article is the seven C's of effective teaching and I'll go through those just briefly because I think it's a kind of an interesting list and then the last one is uh, a survey that was done how teachers feel about standardized testing and I'll come back and talk about that at the very end. So let's start with uh, textbooks. When uh, when we're looking at textbooks, obviously uh, one of the things that we tried to do at the cyber school here is try to become paperless. And so we did a fair amount of work in making sure everything we do is digitized and everything we do is backed up. I just got an email that said, uh, sorry, uh, a chat here that says, I'm not seeing the live show, I only have the one from yesterday. So, here we go again. This is me not knowing what the heck I'm doing while I'm online. Tell me if it comes on, Jason, so I'll hesitate here for a second and see if you actually get this or not. My phone call I think messed things up so I think it's just been delayed a little bit and we'll see if it actually comes across now somebody said good morning all from cool pool teacher which is kinda cool welcome cool pool teacher Jason says he's got it working Jason it wasn't your mistake it was mine um, so sorry about that um, I also got an email uh, that just came in from Jason Benson that talks about the fact that it's uh, it, I have audio but it's a little bit choppy um, that's just our internet connection within our system um, but hopefully it will get better as we go along here Jason so we'll see what happens so um, I, I actually explained as uh, to everyone out there what we were gonna do today and I will repeat it because I wasn't broadcasting so um, here's what I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to talk about the articles that have come across my desk and any questions that you guys may throw out here, throw out to. So if you have any questions at all, feel free to throw them out. I'm here. I'm, uh, I'll answer as many questions as I can or anything uh, that I can do. So the first thing is 
Um, we don't need no stinking textbooks was an article that ran across my desk and it's kind of a theme for the day for some reason everybody is uh, slamming textbooks so that's the one of the articles that come across the second one that came across that talked about textbooks is was called beyond the textbook and the third one was beyond the textbook the internet is the best textbook and then uh, the other articles that I would just briefly speak to is that there's an article that talks about building good search skills for students what they need to know and then the next one is 10 essential resources for teachers one of the things that happens a lot on social networking is the list of 10 everybody writes out these lists of 10 different things that you should know um, 10 of the best iPad apps 10 of the best reasons why you shouldn't use textbooks 10 of the reasons why you should use this LMS or that LMS for some people for some reason everybody likes to have their numbers numbered lists out there so the next article is the seven C's of effective teaching again a list that we'll talk about and the last one is teachers place little value on standardized testing which was a survey done so I'm going to start with the one on textbooks um, here at the cyber school we've tried for the last couple of years to go as paperless as we possibly can which as you can see works really well we have no paper laying around anymore um, no matter what we do there's always paper being sent out uh, you go to meetings there's agenda meetings always have paper there's still textbooks use, being used in all our schools all of our new courses that we are now offering the new math curriculum for instance we've gone out and we've purchased new textbooks for all of those um, there has been a lot of press being put to whether or not textbooks are necessary the one article that I found real interesting is um, even though they say we don't need any uh, stinking textbooks for a teacher who is not very strong um, educator the textbook is a lifesaver it will give them the material that they need so that's kind of nice um, the other one is the internet is the best textbook I found that article is something that we've been promoting here when we we have no textbooks at the cyber school all the material that the students need we've tried to produce in our LMS put it online and so that the students have all the material at their fingertips as we uh, started the cyber school a couple of years back what we were trying to do was reproduce what we had in our face-to-face -face classroom as we reproduce those classes we tended to um, take what we have done in our face-to-face -face classroom reproduce it in the digital world because what we were trying to do at that time was sell that online learning is a necessary thing and something that we should be doing and because you're trying to sell it the only way to really sell something is to be able to put it into a framework that other people could understand and so we tried to produce courses that looked exactly like the online stuff and then textbooks textbooks were requested quite often by students is there a textbook that I can use in case I don't understand what is being explained in the in the uh, virtual world and so at the very beginning we did have a few classes that had textbooks attached to them as we got further and further into the development of the courses we have eliminated the textbooks and we've decided that all the material is online it's also we've now changed the way we write our courses the course writing a course now it takes less work because there's so much information on the World Wide Web so you can actually go out there and find material lots and lots of material that pertains to your subject area you can find lots of videos of people explaining a topic that you're trying to explain the necessity to actually write the content is not there anymore the what it, what the course development now has turned into is the ability to go out there and find the material and pull it into your LMS so that the students can access it you can have a concept explained in four or five different ways an audio file a video file an animated file a text file you can have all these different methods of explaining the information to the students because the content is out there now on almost every single topic you could possibly want the issue comes down to um, for the teachers who have a real problem of releasing that control and allowing other people to explain the material and then you become more of a phyllis, uh, facilitator rather than the sage on the stage and then we're talking about the argument about the sage on the stage or the the guide on the side type argument but anyways that is uh, basically all we need to do when we talk about textbooks in the face-to-face -face classroom in our school division what I hope will happen in the future is we are d developing these great courses and so what I've done is I've taken all the co all the 
well, I haven't done. Our cyber school has taken all of the courses that we have. We duplicate those and make them into hybrids. The hybrids can then be used in the face-to-face -face classroom. These ha can replace a textbook because the content is being explained to them. And basically what has happened is a master teacher, the cyber school teachers have gone out there, found the material on the World Wide Web that's really good, or have created the material themselves, have put it into their LMS, and now that LMS can be used by another teacher as they're teaching the same subject area, which then releases the need for a textbook. So that's my little blurb on textbooks. Um, I'm going to go back here and say, hi Clint, I noticed you were on the chat. Eh? Um, <laughs> I don't know if I want to talk about uh, Volkswagen's Clinton, but <laughs> um, anyways, welcome Clint to the uh, the social stream. I the, you have to click back and forth between the two, the social stream and the chat. So at the moment, I'm just going to keep the social stream up and running. So welcome Clint, welcome Cool Pool Teacher, w welcome Jason Sand, welcome Ryan Hauber, and anyone else who's online. Uh, feel free to drop a little note and ask a question if you would like to ask one. Okay. The next article that I would like to just speak to briefly is building good search skills, what students need to know. The internet has everything, well not everything, but it has almost everything a student would ever need to know. All the content that a student needs to, f any questions a student needs to have answered, they can find the answer normally on the World Wide Web. What the skills that they need to learn is what is of value and what is not. And so that um, the skill of being able to determine good material and bad material is very important and so one of the things that uh, you'll hear a lot of students do is say oh well I'll just Google that to find the answer which is really cool except for the fact that Google gives you everything you can possibly think of and too much so it's important that you teach them how to do a multi-step approach to their their searching how they could use uh, the the plus the quotations the negative sign the it's just uh, some skills in searching. Um, as a search, as a tool, the search tools get better and better, and as Google gets better and better written, um, it tends to bring a lot of material forward. There are also a whole pile of search engines out there that are built for children. So if you're ta talking about students that are a little bit younger, sometimes though there's better search engines, and um, a good place to find those if you go to the Tato um, blog, just type in search engines under the search then it should work. One of the issues that I'm running into with the Tato blog at the moment is my search doesn't work very well but, but believe me in the next couple of days I will have that fixed and it will work a lot better. Um, now let's talk about lists. 10 essential educational resources for teachers. This was put together and someone posted it so um, what they're talking about um, for hardware here's some uh, the hardware Ish, the hardware items that every teacher should have according to this author he says a computer a projector and speakers a smartphone a way to control your computer remotely and students access to technology that's his four under hardware under software apps Evernote cloud file storage Google Google for educators and discovery education free resources Google for educators is the one that I really like um, obviously because uh, being trained in Google I think there is some very cool tools out there under the Google uh, Docs system for education. Course management system and grade books and then uh, help and other resources a person personal learning network is important for um, teachers and I thought that was kinda neat because I have found since I've started to use the social networking tools um, I've become more and more versed in what the thought of the day is and what the flavor of the week is for educational reform and uh, just reading all the different articles that are out there having all this material being sent to me within my uh, my inbox within my Twitter feeds within well all the different social networking tools you guys all know what that which ones are out there um, it's really interesting to get up in the morning and have all that material just waiting for me to read and for me to siphon through Jason asked uh, what's my thoughts on the I Tunes you and the potential off offline text material. Um, iTunes you, I I really like. 
Um, I myself think iTunes is a little restrictive, but that's just the way Apple has constructed constructed the iTunes tool. Um, I find it's uh, very proprietary, but it's also a very good tool and it works very well. So the iTunes U and the open source materials that are on there, there's some unbelievable materials there. If you want to learn how to program, you can go learn how to program online free of charge by using the iTunes U um, our ability to place material on there it's an excellent uh, delivery system it's a learning management system like any other learning management system it's just missing some of the tools so I, I like the iTunes U I think uh, some of the post-secondary um, institutions are going to tap into it more and more I think that there's always the, the the discussion that goes on between Apple and PC, and I don't think that that discussion is going to be one that we're going to have to worry about in five, ten years, because I don't think the actual necessity to have one platform or the other platform will be needed in the future. I think what will end up happening is the cloud computing is going to start to take over and will blend the difference between the two. I am a definite Apple user when it comes to the iPad and I love the i the Macs for drawing and for art. I love the PC because I, it's one that I've started with and one that I've used a lot and I use it because of the fact that there's still a large proportion of our students, large proportion, the majority of our students are using PCs. So for us to even contemplate the possibility of going to Apple instead of PC just is not viable. So what we're going to do in the future is try to do more of both um, and not focus on one or the other. The iTunes, because it does work on uh, the PC, I think is really cool. And so I don't know if I answered that, Jason, but thanks for the question. Clint uh, states that my brother just received an iPad 3. I just heard on the news that the iPad 3 runs really hot for some reason. It overheats. Not overheats, but it's running like 40 degrees hotter than uh, than room temperature. Um, that I find interesting. Uh, one of the neatest things I found about the, the first iPad is the fact that there isn't any heat coming off it, or very little if there is. And so I hope they don't have an issue with it overheating because that will certainly uh, hinder the ability for uh, iPad to continue to grow and take over the market the way it is done. Uh, Mark says he's lost all videos and audios for the past two minutes. That's not unusual. Well, you have to remember we're using a uh, community net here. So, um, Jason says, I'm jealous. I'm just waiting for Darren to buy mine through the cyber school. Yeah, we won't be buying iPads uh, through the cyber school for a little while yet. So. <laughs> But anyways, um, that's, uh, thank you for the questions, you guys. Just keep uh, talking amongst yourselves, and I don't mind the conversation in the back stream, so that's kind of cool. Um, Clint asked me to comment on wireless in schools and students using their own devices and laptops, essentially. Um, there has been a whole pile of uh, conversation in the States about bring your own devices to school. I can't see us not going that way. I can't see us not having wireless available to all the students. Um, there is a little confusion when, in the thought process when people start talking about allowing students to bring their their laptops into the schools because they're concerned about them getting onto our network. The Most of the students don't want access to our network, they want access to uh, the internet. As more and more things become cloud, um, and I'll keep using that term over and over again, as more and more tools are available on the internet, less and less necessity will be for um, applications to reside on home computers or on the machine or on the laptop that you're carrying around. Everything will run on the World Wide Web. So when we're talking about wireless in the schools and students having their own devices, the most important aspect of that whole thing is the fact that we have the strongest, sorry, the biggest connection to the internet that we can possibly afford. The internet, in my mind, is the educational tool that is the most important for schools to be successful. So until we have that super bandwidth available to the students, we're stopping them from being able to become 21st century learners. The internet is what we're, is going to be the most powerful tool since the book when it comes to education. So then we need to be able to provide that to the students. We are still under the, the misconception that the teacher is 
is the the disbursement of content and I don't think that should happen anymore and they, they need to become more facilitators the teacher is still the more most important tool in the classroom but the second most important tool in a classroom is access to the largest library in the world and access to the library that these students interact with continuously in their own personal life and we have to teach the students how to use it effectively and how to um, leverage that tool the best they possibly can in order to be successful so um, so anyways um, the iPRISM issues um, I know that uh, iPRISM has bounced back and forth when it clicks in. It depends on which browser you're using. Internet Explorer is always supported through our division, and every once in a while, iPRISM, for those people that don't know and are not part of our division, iPRISM is the, the application that that makes sure that we're surfing to the appropriate sites for an educational institution. It's a necessary evil that we have in our school division and it's something that we need to continue to support. Um, it just should be a techno technology aspect in our school division that we should never see. Because we are on inside the school division, our username and password should allow it to single log on through that and we shouldn't have to continually um, every 30 minutes inform iPRISM that we are part of the school division and we're going to the right stuff so um, I'm not too sure Jason about the uh, any data from the Bethlehem trial period um, will be available I haven't heard yet so cool pool teacher it's got fiber so it's kinda nice to have uh, to have that power sir <laughs> or ma'am, I'm not too sure if you're a male or a female, but um, it would be certainly be nice to have fiber into all our schools. That would certainly help a lot. Um, one of the, the things that, uh, and I, no, I don't think this is a shock, and I don't think I'm saying anything that I shouldn't, Community Net is designed and was designed for schools within Saskatchewan to speak to each other. Um, I think the the pipeline that they have coming out of Regina for all the Saskatchewan schools to use will never be big enough for the schools to effectively use the internet. The internet is designed and the whole design of the internet is that there's multiple access points uh, so each school going out to the internet would be a better design than all the schools going down to a single site and then going out through a pipeline. Um, I think that's a very limited, limiting design and it uh, will hinder us being able to effectively provide internet for the whole province of Saskatchewan in this in not the province of Saskatchewan the school system uh, in Saskatchewan so I'm hoping that in time we will revisit the, the actual structure and the way it's set up and then allow schools to gain access to the internet in a different way or in a better way so that we don't have a problem so anyways uh, I've got a little bit off topic there but that's what this is all about I love the internet and the interactive uh, discussions and I would like to have more of the, the talk back and forth because I think that's kind of cool. The last article that I want to talk about here and then I'll come back to you uh, Clint in a second is uh, teachers placing little value on standardized testing. For some reason in the educational environment in the states and in Canada we're talking about um, forcing like we talk about individual school we talk about the the students ability to capture their passion to be able to work on their passion to individualize their their educational system and all that other stuff and then we come down to standardized testing where we want everybody to know this so the standardized testing is not a bad thing as long as we understand that that is the standard that is what students need to know on top of that is where we get to build all of the things that will in, will engage students that will get the students interested in education will get the students to be able to individualize what they're looking for to be um, just to become lifelong learners I think the the task in front of teachers is to take the standardized test understand that's a necessary evil for governments to be able to understand what level of education we're offering in each one of the schools and then from there we need to then excite the students to the point where they become lifelong learners so anyways um, using my class Twitter and Facebook blog and the HC library is painful the internet so slow uh, yeah and we will continue to uh, I, I know that's the number one discussion that everyone has when they talk to um, the government and they talk to the the way our community net is set up in our school division here in Saskatchewan and they will continue to talk about it it's painful for everybody across the province so it's not anything new for anybody but 
That's the way it is, kids. And until that changes, we're going to have a problem bringing Saskatchewan into the 21st century. Until we have access to the internet, which is, in my mind, the number one tool for education, we have to fix the community net. So, there we go, kids. Thank you for tuning in. It's nice to see everybody came by. Feel free to come by tomorrow. We'll be on at 10 o'clock again. Thanks for, um, again, having your chat back and forth. I like that, you guys. And I will stop my broadcast in the next couple of minutes and then say goodbye to everybody and then stop my recording. Once again, Tato Live, signing off.